All right, let's bring in Sergei Karaganov. He has served as a presidential advisor to both Boris Yeltsin as well as Vladimir Putin. He is also a member on the Council of the Foreign Policy of the Russian Federation's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He joins me now live from Moscow. Mr. Karaganov, good to speak to you. Um, has Mr. Putin uh, grossly overestimated the capabilities of the Russian forces, as Mr. Rodnyansky just stated. I mean, we're a year into this conflict. Uh, Russia has arguably lost close to 200,000 of its soldiers. Um, it has uh, struggled to gain any significant amount of territory. Uh, let's go back to one of the original goals of this special military operation, to denazify the, the country. It has not been able to do that. And I think you'll be the first to admit Russia is struggling. Uh, first of all, I mean, um, I'm, I'm happy to see you. Uh, second, uh, according to our estimates, uh, and I uh, know uh, these estimates from the professionals, uh, the ratio of uh, uh, those killed in the field uh, is 1 to 8, 1 to 10, uh, 1 Russian, 10 or 8 Ukrainians. Uh, it's still a very big figure but if you if you if i repeat what you have said that means two million ukrainians have died i hope not every man or woman uh, uh, should be saved uh, but it is a war first second uh, i think that at the beginning of uh, the operation russian um, underestimated uh, uh, the way uh, the level of uh, readiness of a uh, um, uh, Ukrainian forces and the level of their support, um, pre previous support uh, from the West. Uh, that means only one thing, and uh, you know, which I have been telling my colleagues uh, for years, that we should have attacked earlier. Uh, second, or um, uh, send in ultimatums uh, saying that Ukraine should never uh, be a member of NATO. As to the operation itself, it is going uh, hard, it's going in the right way. There is no question that Russia uh, would win, and the victory means uh, uh, total defeat of, America, of the Ukrainian armed forces and uh, total denazification of Ukraine, and that is uh, uh, doing away uh, with the present uh, regime, which is very, uh, which uh, looks very much like uh, uh, the heroes. Uh, uh, they cater to, I mean, the Nazis. Mr. Karaganov, if I can pick you up on one thing that you, you just said, that, uh, that Russia underestimated Ukraine's support from the West, you have blamed NATO for starting this conflict in previous interviews, saying, and I quote, the West has been advancing and preparing to attack Russia. What evidence do you have that NATO was preparing an attack? How can you say Russia should have attacked earlier? Uh, well, we have. Uh, well, I have been telling that for 25 years, and uh, there were uh, uh, at, at, at first, uh, West uh, was a little, uh, simply uh, willing to um, uh, um, uh, enlarge sphere of control and influence. Uh, later, it became worse and worse. Uh, so, for years, for last years, I have been. Uh, telling uh, my colleagues as, as well as colleagues in the outside world uh, that uh, we should fight uh, either on our soil or on some other soil. We have chosen the latter. Uh, as I've said, it should have been probably uh, done um, uh, a bit earlier. However, uh, uh, the end game is uh, clear. There will be a total destruction of uh, what is now uh, anti-Russian Ukraine. Mr. Karagodov, when you say total destruction, it, it, it brings to mind, at least with me, something that happened just a couple of days ago. Uh, Russia has unilaterally uh, withdrawn from the New START uh, Treaty. Uh, you are an astute studier of uh, diplomatic relations between the two countries, and I think that you would be the first to agree that this New START Treaty was not only uh, the cornerstone of the disarmament and the non-proliferation uh, regime, but it was also at the core of the diplomatic relations between the United States and Russia. With Russia's pulling out of this treaty, uh, does this tell me that Russia does not want any legal or diplomatic relations with the United States? 
the uh, United States have broken all treaties uh, and all promises. It has withdrawn from uh, most of the signed treaties. Um, Sir, it, it uh, is withdrawn from the intermediate uh, treaty, but Russia has withdrawn from all the previous START treaties. The ABM treaty, which was the, uh, the core of the whole uh, strategic arms control. And, uh, but, uh, but we also saw that what they have been doing elsewhere, uh, so there is no absolutely no trust. It doesn't matter that we uh, shouldn't um, uh, keep something of an arms control. Uh, but uh, I think what we are doing is that we are showing that we are starting to climb the ladder of deterrence. Some call it ladder of escalation. If our neighbors in the West or far West uh, wouldn't stop, uh, 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 they will suffer for that. You say just then that there is absolutely no trust between Russia and the West. So how does this end? You've also said that this would be fought on Russian soil or some other soil, indicating that Ukraine is not Russian and it's a sovereign country. So how does Russia get out of this war in another country that it is not winning one year on? Uh, it will win in several years. Unfortunately, unfortunately... Several years? You think this will go for is, several it, years? It is, war. it is a big war. It's called special operation. Uh, uh, of course, we could have done it uh, uh, earlier, but we are not uh, going to the higher ladder of escalation at the juncture. Uh, if we uh, see that uh, there is no way to dissuade our Western enemies now, uh, from um, uh, supporting uh, uh, this uh, weird regime uh, in Ukraine, you know, which and uh, fighting until uh, uh, the last uh, Ukrainian, uh, until the last Ukrainian, and using Ukrainians as uh, the cannon uh, fodder. Well, uh, we'll go further. Uh, it will take long, but uh, also our troops are trying to. Um, uh, save as many lives as possible. They are not bombarding uh, full-scale cities, uh, though the fighting is harsh. Um, it could have been done if we would have done it the American way, like they did it in Iraq, or else, I mean, uh, probably we would have uh, won, but we are saving the Ukrainian citizens. Mr. Karagodov, I want to sort of switch gears uh, and ask you about uh, what President Putin, you think, is thinking about the growing tensions between Yevgeny Prigozhin and the Russian military leadership. You know, just a couple of days ago, uh, Mr. Prigozhin posted on Telegram uh, photos of the dead bodies of some of the Wagner fighters, uh, essentially blaming the Russian military leadership uh, for the starvation of quote-unquote um, ammunition. I, I would assume this is not the type of unity that Mr. Uh, Putin wants to see. I'm sorry. Um, uh, if I know, uh, if I would have known how the operation uh, is being run, I wouldn't be to would have been uh, talking to you. I couldn't react uh, to all kind of uh, weird accusations which I hear from the West. I'm sorry, you are just repeating them. Um, I don't know what 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 is happening uh, there, and I think it's useless for me uh, to uh, comment on that. What I am saying, what I know for sure. Uh, is that uh, sooner or later, but better sooner, uh, we shall uh, first uh, uh, destroy military, Ukrainian military, uh, completely and demilitarize the country, and uh, second, denazify uh, it. And that is, I mean, impose something uh, of a more civilized uh, life uh, on the earth, like we did in GDR or like uh, Americans and others uh, did in the Federal Republic of Germany after the war. Mr. Sergei Karaganov, uh, thank you very much for joining us here on our special coverage. It is uh, very uh, nice to speak to you and hear your, your analysis. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir.